This episode is sponsored by Thrive Market, an online membership-based market that makes healthy living easy and affordable. They have everything from basic and specialty grocery items to non-toxic home products, and it all comes in eco-friendly packaging. You choose your membership type, one month at a time or 12 months. I went with the 12 month because it comes down to $5 a month. Join today to get $20 off your first order and a free gift. The link is in the video description. Now let's get down to basics. All right, so today we're making both falafel and hummus, for both of which we're going to need some dried garbanzo beans. Just like most kinds of beans, you're gonna get better mileage out of the dried stuff than the canned stuff. You can definitely make hummus out of canned garbanzo beans, but don't even try to make falafel. When you soak them, you wanna soak them in four times their weight of water. That is, I have eight ounces of garbanzo beans here that I'm gonna soak in 32 ounces of water. It's not gonna smell so great, but it's going to have the perfect texture for falafel. But first, we're going to whip up some hummus, dropping 12 ounces of soaked beans and some water covering and boiling for two hours. That's why you can use canned garbanzo beans to make hummus, because they're wildly overcooked. You know that your garbanzo beans are ready when you can squish them between your fingers. At great peril of your fingers. Ow. Anyway, we're gonna drain these little suckers, rinse them, and allow them to cool off a bit before we puree them by virtue of a food processor. Simply dump in your soaked and cooked chickpeas, as they're sometimes called, along with two cloves of garlic roughly chopped. We're gonna blitz that up for about 30 seconds, scraping down the sides of the bowl until relatively smooth and homogenous. Then we're adding the squeezed juice of one large lemon, one half cup of extra virgin olive oil, and a third of a cup tahini, an extremely flavorful sesame seed puree. Then while everybody's processing, we're going to slowly stream in between a quarter to a third of a cup of ice water, continuing to allow the mixture to process for three to five minutes, scraping down the sides of the bowl until it is smooth and creamy and has an almost hummus-like texture. Be sure to season with plenty of kosher salt and you've got yourself a delicious condiment that will last four to five days in the fridge. Next up, we're gonna make a simple lemon tahini sauce to serve with our falafel. In a small bowl, we are combining a half cup of tahini, obviously, a quarter cup of lemon juice, obviously, one clove of garlic, either pressed through a garlic press or minced, a half teaspoon of freshly ground cumin, and a generous pinch of kosher salt to taste. Tiny whisk to combine, and we want this sauce to be extremely drizzleable, so feel free to add some ice water to thin it out if necessary. Give it a taste and dream about how lovely it would be on falafel. More on that after the break and we're back. As you can see before me, I have a selection of fresh dill, parsley, and mint, all of which I'm going to very finely chop, maybe two to three tablespoons worth of dill and mint and a quarter cup of freshly chopped parsley. Once Jess has lined up the shot and she gives you the green light, go ahead and scoop them up. That looked pro, I think that was worth it. Set this aside and then it's time to toast our spices. Into a small fry pan goes about a tablespoon of cumin seeds, a tablespoon of coriander seeds, and a quarter teaspoon of Aleppo pepper that we're gonna toast over medium heat, tossing occasionally, making sure that they do not smoke, but become lovely and fragrant. Once toasted, we just gotta dump them out, let them cool, and grind them up. If you're using pre-ground spices, simply substitute with two teaspoons of ground cumin and one and a half teaspoons of ground coriander. Freshly ground spices are a pain in the ass, but preferable because of their brighter, more floral flavors, which are gonna translate really nicely in such a relatively simple dish. Make sure you run them through a fine mesh sieve to catch any errant particles that might otherwise break a tooth, and with that, we are finally ready to break out the food processor again, into which we are going to deposit roughly one pound of our soaked chickpeas, one small onion roughly chopped, and two cloves of garlic roughly chopped. Pulse everybody together until everybody is roughly chopped. Then, of course, we're going to scrape down the sides of the food processor bowl and add all of our freshly chopped herbs, along with the zest of one small lemon for a bit of zesty lemon flavor. One teaspoon of baking powder that should add some lightness to our balls. A generous pinch of kosher salt and a few big twists of freshly ground black pepper. Go ahead and process all that together. Oop, don't forget your freshly ground spices. Go ahead and process all that together until you have a pebbly, chunky kind of paste. This is your falafel dough. Batter? I'm not really sure what this stuff is called. Let me know in the comments. I don't feel like Googling it. Next up, it's time to shape. There are two classic shapes for falafel. Probably the most familiar, the perfectly round falafel ball, or better suited for baking or pan frying, there is the falafel patty, which gets its name from the fact that it is shaped like a patty. 
No matter what shape you shape them, these guys can be covered and fridged overnight, but no matter what, you want to fridge them for at least a half hour before cooking to ensure structural integrity. Now let's go over the different means by which to make falafel, probably the healthiest and most hands-off of which is baking, for which we want to generously oil a rimmed baking sheet with vegetable oil, place our patties over top, and likewise generously oil them so they get a nice brown crust. When they head into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven, 350 with convection, for 15 to 20 minutes being flipped half way through cooking. As you can see, this is a relatively messy, sticky process that doesn't really end up giving you a very good end product. It might be a bit healthier, but as with all things, it's way better when fried. So we are covering the bottom of a medium saute pan with vegetable oil, dropping in our falafel patties once the oil is shimmering, and frying to crispy golden completion about two to three minutes per side. Is this going to save you any calories versus deep frying? No. Is it a lot easier and a lot less scary than deep frying? Yes. Is it much harder than baking? Debatable. Does it end up crispier and tastier than baking? Yes. Is it less healthy than baking? Negligibly. Will I ever run out of questions to ask myself? Yeah. So lastly, we're moving on to deep frying, a medium best suited for the ball. We're frying these at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for four to five minutes, a low enough temperature where the falafel will cook through, but also develop a deep golden brown crust. Retrieve and drain on paper towels before serving hot with your contrastingly cold hummus. We want to sort of make a bed of hummus with a crater in the center for any lovely number of hummus accoutrement like roasted red peppers, olives, chicken, or just more garbanzo beans. If you've got any sumac, now's the time to break it out. It looks pretty and its light kind of citrusy flavor plays beautifully with hummus. Then we just gotta stack our falafel around the crater, make it look all nice and symmetrical if you're like me and that's something that you really deeply care about. Optionally drizzle with our beautiful tahini sauce. Once again, looks nice, tastes good, then maybe hit it with some roughly chopped parsley and some more sumac, and because this recipe begins and ends with olive oil, some more olive oil. And there you have it, homemade falafel with homemade hummus, a dish that tastes as good as it looks, even if you don't look super tasty while tasting it. But thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this episode. Thrive Market is where you can find thousands of the highest quality and sustainable products in grocery, supplements, home, and more. They make it easy to shop by diets and values like fair trade certified, non-GMO, keto, paleo, and more. If you're concerned about the environmental effects of having your groceries delivered, Thrive Market has you covered. Your package will be delivered with carbon neutral shipping methods from their zero waste warehouses. Head to the link in the video description, thrivemarket.com slash binging with Babbage to sign up for a Thrive Market membership. You'll get $20 off your first order and a free gift when you join today.